A projectile leaves the barrel at Mach 6.5, faster than any missile can blink. Across the sea, a turreted laser cuts the air with silent light, shown off at Beijing's massive parade marking the 80-year anniversary of victory over Japan. Two visions of war, Japan's reborn US railgun, China's LY-1 laser, one promises unstoppable kinetics, slugs that smash anything in their path. The other claims infinite magazine depth, beams that kill at the speed of light. Both are real. Both are pointed at the same waters. Which weapon actually works when the fight starts? That's the point, and it will decide who leads Asia's future. And we're about to break it. 1. The American Railgun Dream America wanted a wonder gun. In the early 2000s, the US Navy poured money into railguns convinced they had found the weapon that would end the missile age. No chemicals, no flash, just electromagnetism hurling projectiles at Mach 7. One shot carried the punch of 200,000 rifle rounds fired at once. The numbers dazzled. A 32 megajoule railgun could throw a 23-pound slug at over 8,000 feet per second, nearly seven times the speed of sound. Range? More than 100 miles. Price tag? About $25,000 a shot. Compare that to a Tomahawk cruise missile at $1.8 to $4 million, and it looked like a Pentagon accountant's dream. Missile killing power for the price of a Toyota. But physics refused to play nice. The gun needed 25 megawatts of power just to keep firing. That's the entire electrical output of a destroyer diverted into one cannon. Only the Zumwalt class with 78 megawatts on tap could even dream of feeding it. And barrel life? Ugly. After a hundred or so shots, rails wore down, accuracy fell off, and the risk of catastrophic failure went up. Guidance was another killer. A railgun slug is fast but dumb. Without homing, it could shred a tank or a ship if it hit, but against maneuvering missiles, the Navy wanted brains, not just brute force. Adding guidance meant adding complexity, size, and cost. Suddenly, the $25,000 slug looked a lot less cheap. Still, the hype rolled on. In 2014, videos of Mach 7 test shots went viral. Headlines called it the future of naval warfare. Congress wrote checks. By 2020, the Navy had burned through more than half a billion dollars on the program. And in 2021, the funding vanished. The official line, focus shifted to hypersonics and lasers. The unofficial truth, the Navy had spent $500 million to build a YouTube railgun channel, proved the thing could shoot, and then walked away. For America, the dream of an electromagnetic cannon died quietly in budget notes. But in Tokyo, it was just beginning. 2. Japan Brings It Back While Washington shelved its wonder gun, Tokyo kept grinding. Japan's Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics Agency, ITLA, looked at America's abandoned blueprint, borrowed the good bits, fixed the weak spots, and by 2023, fired something the U.S. Navy never managed, a railgun at sea, mounted on a warship, aimed at a real target vessel. The test ship was J.S. Asuka, a 6,200-ton dedicated experiment platform. On her stern deck sat a turret unlike anything else afloat, a chunky squared-off box housing a 5-megajoule railgun. In June and July, ATLA announced, the cannon fired slugs across the water, scoring the first-ever live shots from a ship-mounted railgun into a target vessel. Not a lab test, not a trailer rig, a warship. The performance was more than symbolism. ATLA's test gun pushed slugs at Mach 6.5, around 2,230 meters per second, nearly 5,000 miles per hour. In trials, the weapon managed 120 consecutive shots without tearing itself apart. That's the holy grail, barrel life. America's prototypes shredded rails in a few dozen shots. Japan proved it could fire over a hundred times without catastrophic erosion. For a tech once dismissed as unworkable, this was a shot heard around the Pacific. The system itself ran off containerized power, one 20-foot ISO container for charging, three more stacked with capacitors storing 5 megajoules per shot. Slugs weighed about 0.7 pounds each. ATLA tested two designs, a separated projectile with armor-piercing qualities and an integrated, simplified version for cheaper production. Their goal? Keep it affordable, keep it reliable, keep it firing. And Japan is thinking bigger. ATLA already mapped a roadmap to 20 megajoule guns, quadrupling the muzzle energy. Their presentations have shown railguns sketched onto future 13 DDX destroyers, the next generation fleet expected in the 2030s, and even Maya-class Aegis destroyers. What America abandoned as impractical, 
Japan is planning to deploy as operational naval hardware within a decade. The implications are huge. A Mach 6.5 slug doesn't care about jamming. It doesn't care about weather. It doesn't explode, it just smashes through whatever it hits with raw kinetic energy. Each round costs tens of thousands, not millions. Against cruise missiles, drones, or even hypersonic threats, that's a cost exchange Beijing can't win. China spends 10 to 15 million dollars on a DF-17 or DF-26 missile. Japan spends $25,000 on a railgun shot that can swat it out of the sky. That's budget math no Politburo accountant wants to explain. And Tokyo isn't going alone. In 2024, Japan signed agreements with France and Germany for joint railgun development. A TLA officials have openly invited U.S. contractors back into the program. Imagine the irony. America builds the hype, kills the project, then buys into the Japanese version when it works. For Japan, the timing couldn't be sharper. North Korean missile salvos, Chinese expansion in the South China Sea, PLA Navy parades showing off lasers and hypersonics. Tokyo needs a weapon that makes adversaries hesitate. The railgun isn't a silver bullet, but it's the kind of deterrent that says, fire your million dollar toys, we'll kill them for the price of a Honda Civic. This is why the railgun isn't dead. It just moved zip code. Washington called it a YouTube experiment. Tokyo turned it into steel, fire, and Mach 6.5 reality. 3. China's Laser Army versus Japan's Railgun In 2025, Beijing staged more than a parade. On the 81st anniversary of victory over Japan, the PLA rolled out a weapon designed to send a message. The LY-1 High Energy Laser. Mounted in a massive turret with a wide beam aperture and multiple tracking optics, it wasn't a dazzler to blind cameras. This was pitched as a frontline defense system, a beam meant to burn drones, fry missile seekers, and scorch anything flying too close to China's fleet. State media called it precision destruction and consistent strike. Analysts compared it to America's Helios program, a system powerful enough, at least in theory, to kill anti-ship missiles. The economics looked irresistible. Each shot costs only the electricity needed to fire, measured in cents. As long as there's power and cooling, the magazine is bottomless. A swarm of drones costing thousands apiece could be erased with laser bursts that barely nudge the electric bill. But the weaknesses are old and unforgiving. Lasers scatter in haze, rain, or salt spray. Atmospheric particles sap power with every kilometer. At sea, optics corrode under saltwater spray. Sustained dwell times, the few seconds required to melt through a supersonic missile, are fragile when your beam wobbles in turbulence. Even the US Navy, after a decade of Helios trials, admits ruggedizing sea lasers for combat has been painful. And while Beijing paraded the LY-1 in a road mobile version too, the challenge is the same. Dust, humidity, and weather don't read propaganda. China wants the world to see a weapon with infinite magazine depth. Physics still sees a fragile beam. Across the East China Sea, Japan's answer couldn't be more different. The ATLA railgun, tested on JS Asuka, fires steel at Mach 6.5, nearly 2,230 meters per second, powered by a 5 megajoule capacitor bank packed into shipping containers. In testing, it fired 120 consecutive rounds without catastrophic railwear. For a technology long mocked as impossible, that was a breakthrough. Each shot costs about $25,000, pocket change next to multi-million dollar missiles. So which system rules? The duel depends on the threat. Lasers excel at swarms. Imagine 100 drones launched at a destroyer. A railgun would spend $2.5 million shooting them down. A laser? Pennies. That's China's sales pitch. Drown the enemy in drones, burn them away for nothing. Now flip it. A salvo of 20 DF-17 hypersonic missiles worth roughly $250 million screams toward a fleet. Japan answers with 20 railgun rounds, half a million dollars total. Even if only half connect, the math is brutal. China pays millions per shot. Japan pays thousands. That's an exchange rate Beijing cannot sustain. Railguns don't care about fog or sandstorms. Lasers do. Lasers can fire endlessly. Railguns must reload, but with magazines measured in hundreds of rounds. Lasers kill silently. Railguns leave holes in steel. Neither wins every fight. Together, they're devastating. And here's the irony. The United States pioneered both. It built 32 megajoule railgun prototypes that hurled 23-pound slugs at Mach 7, spent $500 million proving it worked, then canceled the program in 2021. It field-tested lasers like Helios, 
then bogged down in budgets and deployment delays. Today, Washington watches as Tokyo revives the railgun and Beijing parades lasers, while America debates funding lines. 4. The shot that echoes. So what does it all mean? Simple. Asia isn't waiting. China rolls out lasers at parades, Japan fires railguns at sea, and America debates funding lines. The weapons aren't just prototypes anymore, they're signals. Beijing is saying we can blind and burn anything that flies. Tokyo is saying we can punch through your million dollar missiles for the cost of a car. And Washington? It's realizing that allies are now pulling the super weapon projects it once abandoned. For the US, the choice is clear. Join Japan's program, integrate lasers into its fleets, and actually field the layered defenses it's been promising for 20 years, or watch the Pacific arms race unfold without it. For Japan, the railgun is more than a weapon. It's independence, deterrence, and a reminder that technology denied to one generation can roar back with the next. For China, the LY-1 is theater and threat rolled into one beam of light, a message that the balance of power is shifting. And here's the brutal truth. When the first shot echoes, it won't be missiles or jets that decide who leads. It'll be slugs at Mach 6.5 and beams of light. That duel will define Asia's skies. And if you want front row seats as we track every breakthrough, every new weapon, and every move in this shadow war, hit that subscribe, smash the like, and ring the bell. Because the next clash is already rolling, already firing, and you'll want to see it before the headlines catch up.